Okay, hi, we're going to talk about the law of signs, and uh, in particular, we're going to talk about something called the ambiguous case here. Uh, and the reason that the ambiguous case comes up, and I'll give you a little history about why you know, the ambiguous case comes up and whatnot, but it all relates back to uh, if a triangle can be formed from that side or not. Uh, so, very quickly demonstrated that if I have a triangle, right, with some side, okay, uh, some side X and some side Y, Okay, and I have some angle, let's just say 30 degrees for some particular amount. Uh, if I know x has to be like 5, or I know y has to be, say, like 8, okay? If that's the case, right, then this third side could be a couple of different things, and it's based off the triangle theorem where uh, one side plus another side must be greater than the third side. So what we can take here is if I say 8 plus 5, well, just looking at the theorem as it is, well, 8 plus 5 must be greater than 13, so this side must be smaller than 13. Or we could look at the vice versa way, that this side here could have been the largest that it was given, and therefore, if I take 8 minus 5, then that means that my side has to be greater than 3, because 5 plus something greater than 3 would give me something greater than 8. So that's the very basis of where it starts to come from. Now, uh, furthermore, what does that mean? Do. So if I were to change this side and say that this side was the 13, okay, then I would have here, I would have some acute angle and some acute angle from based off the drawing that I have. But what happens all of a sudden if I start making this side smaller and smaller? So what I want you to note here is that this angle would start to drop down, okay? And if this side gets really, really small, this side starts to drop down, or I could say that this side starts to come up, and let me demonstrate it that way. So if I cut off this side here, right? This side then rotates to being up here. If I cut it a little bit more, then it rotates to here, then to here, then to here, then to here, then to here. And what I want you to start to notice is that different angles, okay, between these two, these two angles are starting to develop. And that's why it's called the ambiguous case, because the sides, okay, these angles can be interpreted in a couple of different ways. So that's the basic reason why the ambiguous case exists, and the reason the ambiguous case exists is only because of the, ax uh, the non-axiom of side, side, angle, or you can have angle, side, side. And it's the only one for your congruencies of a triangle that you can't use. So all the others, they aren't ambiguous at all. You just go through, solve it, eat your one triangle, you're done. This one comes up to be a little bit different. And we'll talk about what we do if we come up and get something that's a little bit different. So here we go. So let's go to this particular problem, okay? And this particular problem, it tells me that I have angle B is 48.2 degrees. It tells me side A is 890 centimeters. It tells me side B is 69 point, uh, 697 centimeters. So all I do is I always draw a triangle because the triangle is just going to help me determine which uh, form do I have. Is it going to be the ambiguous case? Is it something that I have to use law of cosines for? And that's the thing that I really, really want to be careful of, is that I always draw the triangle to figure out which axiom goes with what. Because remember, if you have angle, angle, side, it's law of sines. If you have side, side, angle, it's law of sines, the ambiguous case. But you could also have angle, side, angle, which is also the law of sine. The side, angle, side, and the side, side, side congruencies are used for the law of cosines. So you have to be careful, and that's why I draw this triangle, and I always do that. So what I have here is I've got side, I've got side, and I have an angle that is not in between these two sides. If I had an angle that was in between, I might have side, angle, side, and I can't use that here, okay? Because the law of sines is all based off of angles uh, that are opposite, okay? Angles that are opposite of your uh, known angle. So that's where the law of sines comes into play here. So let's go through and we'll talk about the law of sines and how I can solve for things. So I like to organize some information. The goal here is to figure out what is A, okay? So angle A I want to figure out. And I have little A, so I just organize my information in this way. I know big B, and I need to find, and I, I, I know little B, but I need to find angle C, and I need to find side C. So I fill in my information to just help me figure out what it is that I gotta find. So here we go. I have 48.2 degrees, little B is 697, and I have angle A, which is 890, degree, 890 centimeters. I don't know what angle A is, and I don't know what angle C or, little, or side C are. So now this is where we can use the law of sines, where the law of sines says that if I have the sine of A divided by side A is equivalent to the sine of angle B, which is 48.2 degrees, 
divided by, and in this case, I can use 697. Now, some of you may wonder that your teacher maybe puts the side on top or always uses side A over the sine of angle A. It doesn't matter because it's a ratio that if I flip one, I just flip the other. But the important thing is, is that you flip both of them. So now what I'm left here is that the sine of A over 890 is equal to the sine of 48.2 degrees divided by 697. So now all I'm going to do is solve for angle A. So the first thing I need to do is solve for sine of A. So sine of A is equal to 890 times the sine of 48.2 degrees divided by 697. Now by this point, I hope you have learned that if you want to separate the sine function from the angle that it's taking it of, then you want to take something called the arc sine. And the arc sine in your calculator is the sine of the little uh, negative one that just stands for the inverse function, not the one divided by sine. Um, so in this case, I would take to final, finalize this answer, I would say that the sine inverse of 890 times the sine of 48.2, okay, and I would divide that by 697. And that gives me what angle A is going to be. So I would say that angle A in this case is 72.2 degrees. And that's what it comes up to be when it's typed into your calculator correctly. So you should get A is 72.2 degrees. Okay, so for my board space here and what I get on video, I'm going to have to erase this. So just remember that uh, you can rewind it or whatnot if you need to see the work again or slow me down. But i got to erase at this point so I can continue on with the problem. So getting rid of this information. Okay, what I now have is I need to find angle C. Well, angle C is very easy to find, okay? But before I do that, okay, let's talk about this ambiguous case very quickly. And the ambiguous case is that you've got that the A was equal to 72.2 degrees because you took a sine inverse, okay? And what the sine inverse does is that's going to give you A. Now remember, sine is important because when you get the sine of a function, okay, your answer, whenever you take it, is always going to give you some value in quadrant one. Well, guess what? Sine is also positive in quadrant two, which means it has an angle less than 180 degrees. And this is why the ambiguous case arrives, because of this feature. Because the law of cosines, okay, which you're going to talk about in a later date here, doesn't have it because the law of cosines is positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. Well, quadrant three, all their angles are greater than 180. And you can't have a negative angle when we're talking about triangles. So that's why the law of cosines never has this ambiguous case. And the reason, like I said, for the sines is because there is a reference angle. And this reference angle for A gives me 72.2. Well, where else could uh, sine okay, give you the same inverse angle as 72.2? Well, you take 180 and you minus 72.2. So what you really have is this other angle of 107.8 degrees that also exists. So what you need to check here is that, is this a relevant angle? Is this going to be part of my triangle? Okay, so because that's the true meaning. It's like what you've kind of done all year, where your teacher may say, do you find the sign of this? And you go through and you solve the problem, you get two values. So what's important here, you got to remember about sign, okay, because the side side angle, the side length determines what the angle relationships are is that now that you could create this other angle because the smaller I made the side I could have made some maybe some obtuse angle. So now I get 72.2 degrees and I get 107.8 degrees. So those are my two values that A could be. So I also now have this A2 that I possibly could have. And that is 107.8 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to check in a little bit about does 107.8 is that a, could this angle also make a triangle? So I'm just going to leave this 107.8 off to the side for a second. And I'm going to say that this is some A2 of 107.8 degrees. So now let me go back and I'll come back to this at the end. So let me come back to this C. Okay, so I come back to this C and the way that I would find it is 72.2 plus 48.2. And I would add those together and I'd subtract from 100. And when you subtract from 100, you get an angle of 59.6 degrees. Okay, so I would just use the triangle theorem there that we're all angles of triangle must add up to 180. So side C, to find side C, what I like to use is the given information where you know one angle has to be 48.2 degrees. 
and angle B. So I just like to say, okay, little c divided by, and little c is just side c, divided by the sine of 59.6 degrees is equal to, so now I'm going to use 697 divided by the sine of 48.2 degrees. So then I just solve for C. So C is equal to 697 times the sine of 59.6 degrees divided by the sine of 48.2 degrees. And then I type that into my calculator and what you get is a value for C of 806 centimeters. Okay. So this is the first triangle solved, and if this weren't the ambiguous case, I'd be done. If this were angle, angle, side, I'd be done. My triangle solved for, I have all my information. But again, remember that this is the ambiguous case where my original triangle was side, side, angle. So what I need to check is that this angle 2, which is my reference angle, because remember the first angle you found is always called the reference angle. So this angle 2, okay, 107.8. Given this, in, this in, given information, could I have created another triangle from it? Knowing that A, so I'm just going to call this A2 just to separate it, it's still the given information. This still has to be 890, okay? This big B still has to be equal to 48.2 degrees. This little B still has to be 697, okay? Now little c, a big C, angle C, and little c. Now the thing here is, is what I want to check for is can I make another triangle? Does an angle exist? So basically, can I take these and subtract it from 180? And if I can subtract it from 180 and get a positive measurement, then that's what my angle C is. If I can't, then there's not another triangle and I'm done. And I just go, okay, the ambiguous case proved but that, that it could be interpreted, but there isn't another triangle. So what I would do here is I would just take 107.8 plus 48.8 add them together and subtract from 180 and when you do that in this case you end up getting 24.0 degrees so now I have 24 degrees so now that comes back to well yes then this is another triangle so this reference angle could build another triangle and if I would have done something where I, I took the reference angle and I subtracted it I, I got that other reference angle um, then by subtracting it from 180 and if I added my given to it. If it was greater than 180, then guess what? I can't make a triangle out of it. And then I'm done. I just cross it out and say, okay, this is my only triangle. Okay, so this one, it proved that I could make another triangle. So now that I do have another triangle here, I just solve for C the same way I did before. So I say little c divided by the sine of 24 degrees is equivalent to, so I like to use my given information again because I know that this has to be 48.2 degrees. So I say 697 divided by the sine of 48.2 degrees. So we know that little c then okay, has to be equal to sine of 24 degrees. So multiply that by the sine of 24 degrees. Multiply that side, it cancels out. And I get c is equivalent to 697 times the sine of 24 degrees divided by the sine of 48.2 degrees. Type that into your calculator and you end up getting an answer of 300 and 80 centimeters. So what you have here is that you've got triangle of this measurements and you've got the triangle two or you know, another triangle of those measurements and that's what causes the ambiguous case. So um, things to point out very quickly. What I want you to notice here is that this was the given and the found. My reference angle was 72.2 degrees. It's larger than the given. If something's larger than the given and you're adding the given back to it, you will always get something that has a second triangle. If you get a problem for homework and you go through and you have this given measure and you find an angle that is smaller, you don't even have to do anything because the minute you subtract that from 180 and add a larger number than what you've subtracted, then it's not going to be another triangle. So things to, to make note of are the simple fact that is if, if this reference angle is larger than the given, there's another triangle that you have to check for using the reference angle. And if it's smaller, you only get the one that you found. And that's how you check for the ambiguous cases. So I hope that that helps with any homework that you're doing.